Good morning, students. It is now 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. Just to show you how hard I work for you, I'm working on Sunday. And today, <clears throat> with this video, I'm going to show you how to make, uh, how to build a database from your questionnaire. So I think you can see that I have a, a little uh, example questionnaire up here on the screen. And I'm going to open up SPSS now. So uh, the way I do it, and the easiest way I think, is just to click the Start button and type IBM. Now that's only if you have direct access to SPSS. Uh, if you're going in through Cougar courses, then you know how to, how to open it that way. Either way though, you're going to end up with uh, a screen that looks like this. Um, and the top window, I uh, just want you to close it. And then you're left with two different uh, SPSS screens. Uh, this one on top is a database. And this one behind it, which is now in front of it, is uh, an output screen. Anything you do in this database window, any command that you execute is going to show up in this output screen. Uh, they have two different suffixes. The output screen is uh, sp .spo, I think. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, the uh, database screen is .sav. Okay? So I'm going to take this database and move it all the way over here on the right. And then I'm going to take my questionnaire and put it all the way over here on the left so we can uh, see both things as we go along. Uh, the first thing you should always put in a database is an identification field. So it's real easy to do. <clears throat> I'm just going to type uh, ID, capital ID, in the name field. And uh, tab over to the decimals and change that to zero. And then tab to the label, and I'm going to type respondents ID. Oh, I know what's going on. Number. <clears throat> when you make uh, variables, you know, that is now a variable in this database. Um, most of the time, as you'll see with the questions, we're going to use the name field and the decimal field, the label field, and the values and the missing field. Uh, I'm not concerned with anything other than that. Um, so remember that. There's only five fields that you have to fill in. For the ID field, the only thing I have to put is a name and a label. And I set, I changed the decimal count to zero. And I'm going to talk about that as I go along. Okay, so here uh, is the first question that I have, right? How many hours per week do you use, do you do schoolwork? And I have like a range of hours. So the first thing you have to do for this question to make a variable is to create a variable name. Um, and you want it to be as short as possible. So I'm going to say uh, hours week. That'll be my variable name for this. Because that little, you know, truncated word will remind me what question this variable came from. So um, you cannot put spaces or any special kinds of symbols in the variable names. Uh, the only symbol that I think you can put in there is an underscore, and I'll show you that on the next question. So hours per week, I'm going to tab over, and you can see that the decimal count is two. I'm not going to change that to zero every time. I'm going to go straight over to the uh, label. And then in this case, you need to change this question into a statement. Variable labels cannot be questions. So I'm going to type uh, number of hours respondent uh, does schoolwork. And you can see I made a little error 
in respondent, so I'm going to go correct that. Spelling is really important. And then um, the next cell to the right is values. And if I click this little box, it opens up a value labels box. And value labels are just the answers, you know, the answer list. And you can see here it has value and a label. And the values are the numeric values that are assigned to each answer. Okay, and the label is the actual answer itself. So for the first uh, answer, I'm going to put a value of one. And for the label, it's going to be just like it looks. O to two hours. And then I'm going to add it. And then when you add it, it goes right back to the value. So two and the value is three to four hours. And I'm going to add it. Now you can either click add or you can hit tab and enter. So the next one is the value of three and the value label or the answer is five to six hours. Tab enter. Uh, and the last, you know, actual valid answer is seven or more hours. And, but I must also make um, value labels for these missing values also. Remember DK and NA. DK is don't know, NA is no answer. So the value is eight and just capital DK. I can click add or I can hit uh, tab enter. So the value is nine and the answer is capital NA. Bada bing, bada boom. Now look, we have this whole list of answer choices right in there. And when you get them all in there, including your missing values, just click OK. And the last cell that you have to mess with is the missing value cell, which also has a button. And if you click it, uh, this tiny little window will pop up. And there's three choices here, right? Always use the middle one where it says discrete missing values. And there's three cells there. So what you're gonna do is put in the values, you know, of the missing answers, which in this case are eight and nine. So I'm just gonna put eight in the first cell and nine in the second cell and poof. Oh my goodness. So that, now we have a variable for that first question. And we're just going to keep going. And the next one, number two, is really going to throw you for a loop, which is a good, so it's a good reason we have this video. So you can watch it again and again. Oh, joy. Um, what type of device do you use to do schoolwork? Now, again, the variable name, it's so important to keep them as short as possible. So I would put, you know, for me, I would just put, device but you know you're all just learning so i guess type device would be a good variable name because that would you know it would remind me what this thing is about what this question is so tab 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 i'm going to leave the decimals at two right now and uh let's see what is the label i have to make a statement out of this right you know, the easiest way to make statements is just to cut off the what or the how or, you know, and just, you know, use the rest of the question. So I'm going to, my label is going to be type of device respondent uses to do schoolwork. So over here, I'm going to type type of device respondent uses to do score. Okay, now look at what this is, right? The question says what type of device you used to do schoolwork and then there's this, uh, this instruction that says check all that apply. Now that makes variables kind of funky. You know, you're allowing people to select as many answers as they want to. So you can't really just make a list like this, like we did for the first question. 
you know, what we really have to do is make the variable name type device underscore one, and then the variable label, we're going to type, you know, like we already have, type of device respondent uses to do schoolwork, and then dash phone. And then the values are just going to be one, e, the value of one is yes, and the value of two is no. Bing! There, there is no DK and NA for this question. Because the way it's set up in the database, there's really only two answers you can enter when people fill it out. You know, they either picked it or they didn't. So one equals yes, they picked it. Uh, and two equals no, they did not pick it. And since uh, we only have yes and no answers and no missing values, then we do, we do not need to go in here and uh, assign missing values. Okay, so we have to make one variable for every single answer choice. Okay, now it sucks over here because... You know, we have to type this out, underscore two, because it won't let you uh, copy and paste variable names. Type device, underscore three. Type device, underscore four. And yes, we do have to make one for the other answer, which is underscore five. Uh, the cool thing is that you can just grab, you know, you can copy this variable label and paste it. Uh, you can copy and paste labels. And then it's just a matter of coming in here and changing these individual answers. So I'm going to change that to the second answer, which is tablet. The next one is laptop. Oops, and the next one is desktop, which I use because I'm old and ancient and you know what I'm talking about. And then the next one is other. Okay, then also for the values, I can just go in here and right click and copy and drag these other cells and right click and paste. So uh, that shortens your task uh, a little bit. However, when we have an answer that is other, then we need to make a different kind of variable. So let's say somebody wrote or typed in some other answer, like I use pencil and paper. So we're gonna have to make Another variable here, type device uh, underscore OTH, you know, for whatever they wrote or typed here. Uh, and I can do the same thing I did here, copy, paste, except here it's going to be other answer. And since this variable, you don't need any values or missing uh, information here. Because if you're going to allow people to type an answer into a database cell, you need to change this from numeric to string. And all you do is click in the cell and then click that little button and you can see that there's a string. That just means that you can type in the cell. And you probably want to change the character width to like 50, just to make sure you have enough room, because who knows what people are going to type. And then just click OK. OK, so for question two, you have five variables, one for each answer. And then you also have this extra variable um, just in case they write or type something there. And it is a string variable, so they can uh, 
you can type or they can type whatever. Anyway, you can put text in the cell. All right, let's go to the next one here. How satisfied are you with your professors? Ooh. Um, I'm going to type sat prof. You know, satisfied professors, sat prof. Um, if that's not enough for you, you can put sat professor, but don't put satisfied professor. That's just too much. Okay, so tab over, you know, we're back. We don't have a check all and apply instruction. So this is going to stay as a numeric variable. And then I'm not going to change these decimal count yet, but I do need to change this question into a statement. Uh, what am I going to type here? Uh, respondent satisfaction with professors. Notice what I'm doing here with all these labels. I'm typing them in what's called title case. And that means that I think I mentioned that before. Uh, the first letter of every word is capitalized uh, except for articles and prepositions or teeny tiny words. You can see all the two in all of these are not capitalized. Okay, that's really important. Title case is really important. And then I'm going to go to the next cell and open it up. And I'm going to put the answer choices in here. Remember, this is not check all that applies. So I can just go and put the answers in there directly. Uh, whoops. <laughs> Very unsatisfied. And two is unsatisfied. Of course, nobody would put that for Kilpatrick. Three is satisfied. And four is very satisfied, which is, of course, what everybody would put for Kilpatrick. So the value is four, the label is very satisfied, and then I can add, and then I have to put eight and nine for DK and NA. DK. 9 is the value, and capital NA is the label. And here we are again. I have six answers, and I have six answers. So I click OK, and there they are. They're all tucked in there. And remember, you know, I used 8 and 9 for DK and NA here. And I already have a missing cell that has those values so I can just copy that and paste it here you know copy and paste as much as you can okay the next question is will you finish your degree this year <laughs> please let it be so uh let's see I'll probably make a label that says finish deg uh, again I'm keeping it short but it, there's enough there to remind me what it is um, changing the question into a statement. Respondent will finish degree this year. Well, maybe that's a capital T. And then, you know, yes and no. You know, now I could just copy and paste this here, but remember, we didn't put uh, DK and NA in the check all that apply thing. So we need to put eight and nine for DK and NA uh, for these answer choices. So I'm going to add eight as DK and nine as NA. And I can see, look, I made a little mistake here. Uh, the K in DK is not capitalized. So I'm going to go back in there and capitalize it, and there is a change button. If you make a mistake, you don't have to remove the label and type the whole thing over again. Okay? 
So I'm going to click OK. And then again, you know, look at my missing values are 8 and 9. So I'm just going to copy and paste. On a scale of 0 to 10, with 10 being most happy, how happy are you with online instruction? <laughs> uh, let's see. The, the name that I'm going to make, the variable name, happy online. Oh, joy. And then I'm going to tab all the way over to the label. Um, and I need to make a statement out of this question. Um, let's see. Respondents. Happiness with online instruction. How's that? See, there's a whole lot of respondent, respondent, respondent everywhere. That's uh, the name of the person who is taking your survey is a respondent. Okay, so uh, the value labels that we need to make here. Remember, to make value labels, you're going to click in this cell and click that button. Now, we do not have to make a label for every single number 0 to 10. All we have to do here is make a label for 0 and we'll make it uh, very unhappy. And we'll add that. And then we'll make a label for 10, which is very happy. And I'm going to add that. Um, and look here in the question. This time, DK and NA are 98 and 99, not 8 and 9. Remember, that's because in a 0 to 10 scale, the numbers run all the way through 8 and 9. So I'm going to use 98 for DK and 99 for NA. Okay, this whole thing with 8 and 9 and 98 and 99 is going to be confusing. But you'll get it, I guarantee you. So I'm done with all of my labels. I can click that. Now, can I go in here and copy and paste this? Well, yeah, I could, but I'd be wrong. Okay? So, instead, I'm going to open this. And what I need to put in here in these discrete missing values is 98 and 99. Because that's what I use here. Okay? That's what I used when I made the value labels. Okay? And the same thing with the last two that I'm going to show you. You know, what is your current age? Uh, very straightforward with the name. Just age. And then the label is respondents age. And I'm not even going to make uh, value labels for this. Because, look, um, all they're going to do is write or type in a number here. Okay, so I don't have to, uh, I don't have to put a million numbers in there. The only thing I have to put is DK and NA. So I'm going to open this and type 98 for DK, and 99 is the value, and NA is the label. All I need is the missing value labels for that. And I'm going to click OK. And look here, I have them right above. So I'm just going to copy and paste to put those in the missing uh, cell. And then uh, the last question is, how many total years of education do you have? So, oh, I don't know. Total, how about total years? But that doesn't really, that could be total years of a whole lot of stuff. So I'm going to type total education, you know, EDUC. That'll be my variable name. Um, total number of years. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> How 
about total number of years of education. And again, this is just, they're going to type or write in a number here. So I don't need to make uh, value labels for all of this stuff. All I need is 98 and 99. And I have that right above it in the age variable. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. And the same thing with the missing values. Okay. So that's what you're going to do with your questionnaire. You need to start with an ID field. And then, you know, depending on how many select all that apply questions you have, you're going to have anywhere from, you know, 36 to 45 variables, depending. Okay. The last thing I'm going to do here is change all of the decimals to zero. Right. So instead of changing every single one as you go along, just copy a cell that has zero in it and highlight all the other cells and paste. And then, poof, you can do it in one click. That'll save you time, too. The key thing when you're building a database is just to save yourself time. Okay? Um, super, super important. Make sure your spelling is correct uh, before you turn this thing in. Remember, you don't have to turn this database in until the end of the semester. And also, make sure that you have title case in all of your labels, like look here. Happiness has a small H and it needs a capital H. Uh, that, those are the tiny little things that I will ding you on um, when you turn this in, okay? Label, look, the values are also labels. You know, when you click in the cell, in a value cell and open up the window, that is a value label also. So anytime you make a label, it has to be in title case. Okay, so the V and the U is capitalized. Okay, I think I got it all, right? Uh, yeah, it's gonna be confusing. You know, that, that's why I'm having office hours and uh, that's why you can email me 100 million times a day. Okay, all right. So I'm going to save this database. All I have to do is click that little blue button. And, uh, you know, wherever you want to save this, do it. Uh, I have it saved on my desktop in a little data files folder. You know, that's where I'm keeping all my data files. And I... I named the questionnaire personal database questionnaire example. So I'm just going to name this personal database example. And this will be in, uh, in the class. Both of these files will be in the class this week. Okay. So you can go back and, and check this out. I don't know why I'm so nice to you, but I guess I just am. So, um, when you close SPSS, you're going to get this little window that says, closing the last data editor will exit SPSS. Do you want to proceed? Well, yeah, I want to proceed. Then when you click yes there, uh, it'll ask you if you want to save the contents of the output viewer. And I would say no. At some point in the future of the class, we're going to save uh, the output viewer, but not right now. Okay. Um, definitely you want to uh, save your questionnaire. Uh, mine was already saved, so away it went. So it wasn't that super fun. And yes, I'll see you soon in another video. Bye-bye then.